Hi, I'm Jim Dilley, 6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain. Um, a lot of my friends are telling me conditions aren't so good and they're pretty disappointed with not being able to work other parts of the world as often or as easily as they did in the past. And that's true, but not entirely. There are openings to other parts of the world, even to the bottom of the sunspot cycle. And I know this because I've been through about five of them. And we're going into the bottom of the sunspot cycle, which would likely occur about 2019. Any prediction for the next sunspot cycle is probably a waste of time, so don't, don't, um, I wouldn't pay any attention to it because they don't know, and we don't know. We won't know until we get there. So what do you do as we head into the bottom of the sunspot, sunspot cycle? Um, well, not get discouraged. There is always DX. There is always going to be a DX. It's not going to be every day but there will, be, there will be good days and there will be days that are not so good. Um, if you're not familiar with the band and you want to know what the band is like different times of the day, there are lots of resources and just to name a few. One would be to look at a DX cluster like dxheat.com, dxheat.com. Um, you can pick off or narrow it down as to what you're looking at could be you just want to look at postings by North American stations or uh, maybe you want to look at postings by European stations. You, maybe you want to pick just 20 meters. You can pick just 20 meter phone if you want. It's a great resource. So for example, right now on um, DX Heat, South America is being posted. So that's a good resource. Another one to look at to see what conditions might be, and this is just a rough guide, is uh, the WWV numbers. Um, you can go to uh, eham.net, come down to propagation on the left-hand side, click on propagation, and then look at the WWV numbers. Solar flux is likely to be in the 70s down to the 60s as we head into the bottom of the sunspot cycle. But the A and K index become really important and what we're looking for is no geomagnetic storms, nothing that shows conditions are disturbed. And lower A and K ind indices will probably indicate that the band, or possibly indicate that the bands are, are okay. Uh, today, I think the uh, A was 7 and the K was 1. And it was pretty good. Um, another thing is to uh, look at the gray line and the gray line is good at sunrise and sunset because it's that time between night and day. And where where does that gray line lead to? <clears throat> For example, right now, um, it's not over me yet, but it will be in about an hour. And it looks like if we can advance the gray line just a bit, um, there's a chance for an opening into, uh, into India and for a 7JA uh, China. This morning, the gray line was good into Australia, um, sorry, Austria, uh, Germany, Italy, and England. And sure enough, if you take a look at my log, um, I worked a lot of uh, Europeans in the last few days, uh, including Italy, Netherlands, um, Germany, uh, the United Kingdom, and um, and then in the afternoon, I've worked a few uh, a few Africans. Uh, that path is often open in the afternoon uh, from the west coast and from the east coast to to Africa, uh, following the equator. So we have um, WWV numbers and gray line that will show where the band is open, um, and that changes from day to day as the days get shorter and then they get longer. The other one is to, um, one you might not have thought of, is to look at Whisper. Whisper.net is a really neat resource because stations are beaconing and being automatically heard by other stations around the, around the world. And so right now, if you uh, take a look at the map I've got up, um, stations in the West Coast are being heard in Australia and New Zealand. So likely there's a path at this time to, um, to the South Pacific, to VKZL. And this morning when I looked at it real quick, uh, before sunrise, guys in the Midwest were being heard in, uh, in Europe. Quite a few were. So they're low power stations and they're beaconing. And if they're being heard uh, in, from the Midwest to Europe, conditions are probably pretty good. 
Um, so, what's the point of all this? The point is, there's still there's always going to be a DX. There's some days may be bad because there's been a coronal mass ejection or something's happened, and that that's okay. So tomorrow may be better, or maybe a couple of days will be better. As we get into the bottom of the sunspot cycle, there may be three or four bad days and a couple of really good days. The other thing to keep in mind is um, not to get discouraged. There's likely going to be an opening somewhere. Uh, the crucial thing is timing, and that's knowing what times of the day the bands are open. We can use a DX cluster, uh, Whisper, maybe a local DXer that you uh, that you can talk to. Um, try to try to learn where the band where a band is open to, and then take advantage of that. And that's another thing too is specializing in a band is the strategy that I'm using. I'm putting all my efforts again into 20 meters. Um, I took down the 15 meter Yaggies and I've got everything fine tuned for 20 meters and I'm really studying that band and again learning how it operates. The point is there's lots of lots of days that are going to be good. We're heading in the sunspot bottom of the sunspot cycle, but that's okay because we're going to come out on the other side. There will always be DX. It's just a question of being on at the right time and learning when the band is open. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. I'm Jim W6LG. If you've enjoyed this uh, or if you have a question, post that down below. If you'd like to subscribe, please, uh, please do that. Anyway, 73 from Jim W6LG.